Good evening and welcome to Willow Tree Tales. Here from the old weeping willow tree in the Royal Parklands. My name is Queen Alara and I am the Fay Queen of all things great and small in the parklands, the forest and beyond. Join me for an enchanting adventure. Today we're going to hear all about a very special little friend of mine. My friend looks somewhat like this. Frankie the fox. And he's a very beautiful little fox, as you can see here. But he's even more beautiful in real life. Now, are you ready, Frankie? Should we hear all about your adventures? Yes? You think so? Settle down, make yourselves comfortable, and let's get ready for our story. Now I'm going to use our big enchanted storybook. Let's see what's in there today. Are you comfortable? I'll begin. Frankie Fox. Frankie was a beautiful little fox. He was a more vibrant red and brighter white than most other foxes. And he had deep fluffy fur and a gorgeous bushy tail. Ever since he was a tiny cub, the other foxes and creatures of the Royal Parklands had always commented on how marvelous he looked. He wasn't vain. He just knew that he was born very lucky indeed. And he was a very kind and friendly fox. In fact, he was so friendly, he had friends all over the parklands. Everyone wanted to be his friend. Even the human folk who had spotted him occasionally had also marveled at his beauty and taken countless photographs of him. So much so that his picture was now on the notice boards in the parklands. He was practically famous but he was used to the attention and didn't mind. He had actually learned to use his good looks to his and his friends' advantage. If there were human folk with those big cameras around, he would allow them to catch a little glimpse of him, sitting on a fallen tree trunk, posing in some spectacular fashion. Then he would quickly hide again. They were always intrigued and would come closer to try and find him and get a good photograph. But just as they spotted him again and raised their cameras to their eye, he would dash out of sight. Eventually, they would reach into their bags or pockets and bring out exactly what Frankie was waiting for. Snacks. All kinds of snacks. His favorite were the snacks they had for their dogs. He had tried all of those and loved them. But sometimes he was given jam sandwiches and they were his second favorite. He would wait for the humans to lay a few snacks down. And then he would sneak out of hiding, but he would pretend he was still a little too scared to go close enough. Then they would put more snacks down. Then he would creep out slowly, eat one or two, pick the breast up in his mouth and rush back into his hiding place saving the rest for later. This would go on and on for several rounds until the human had run out of snacks or had gotten all the photographs they wanted. Then, later that evening, when the humans had gone home, Frankie would bring his friends to his hiding place for a wonderful midnight feast. Yes, everyone loved Frankie Fox and he was incredibly happy with his life in the parklands. But one day, everything changed. Frankie woke up one morning feeling very itchy. He couldn't think about what he wanted to do that day. All he could think about was to keep scratching until the itching had stopped. He scratched as he ate his breakfast. 
He scratched as he cleaned his teeth and washed his face. And he was scratching as he left his house to go to his classes with Mr. Badger. Are you all right, Frankie? asked Papa Fox as Frankie went out the door. Oh yes, I'm fine, Papa. See you later, he replied. Frankie loved his daily lessons with his friends and desperately didn't want to stay at home today of all days. He had arranged a race after class with Rafferty Rabbit and his brothers. He was very excited about it. So he hurried off quickly before Papa saw him scratching from the window. He was a little late as he had to stop several times to have a good scratch, but he was sure it would go away soon and he'd forget about it by the time he arrived. But unfortunately, it didn't. He scratched his ears as he sat at his desk. He scratched his tummy as he tried to read his storybook. And at playtime, he had to stop playing tag to roll in the grass and scratch his back. But it was when he went back into the classroom after playtime that the worst thing of all happened. He took his coat off and suddenly there was a gasp from Flora Fox, a pretty fox he was ever so fond of. Then he realized everyone was staring at him with very shocked and concerned faces. Mr. Badger hurried over quickly and in a very kindly voice said, Would you come with me for a moment, please, Frankie? Oh, of course, Mr. Badger, said Frankie. Would you like me to help you carry the books? Oh, that, uh, uh, not just yet, dear boy, said Mr. Badger and took Frankie out into the playground. I'm afraid you need to go home, Frankie. You're not very well. Frankie quickly chewed on his itchy tail before jumping up and saying, not well, I'm fine, Mr. Badger. Oh, just a second, let me just, oh. Frankie had to pause to furiously scratch his ear with his back foot. Frankie, said Mr. Badger, look at your tummy, please. Frankie looked down at his tummy and gasped. All his beautiful white fur was missing from the bottom of his tummy. He was horrified. I'm so sorry, Frankie, but you really are sick and I'm afraid you need to go home until you're better and all the itching has stopped. Run along now, said Mr. Badger, and you'll be back in no time. Mr. Badger went back into the class and a poor shop Frankie began trotting home, scratching all the way. He paused to look at his reflection in the stream and he was shocked to see he was also missing a patch of fur off his face and his beautiful bushy tail now looked straggly and bare. Poor Frankie ran home as fast as he could and went straight to bed. Papa Fox was checking on the potatoes growing in the garden when he saw Frankie dash home hours earlier than normal. So he immediately knew something was wrong. He found Frankie in his bed, hiding under the blankets, crying and scratching. He sat on his bed and gently pulled the blanket back a little so he could see the little fox's face. Right away, he saw exactly what the problem was. Oh dear Frankie Fox, my poor boy, he said. It seems as though we'll be taking a little walk over to the old weeping willow tree later to see Queen Alara. You're rather poorly indeed. Let me draw you a nice cool bath. Over at the willow tree on the edge of the silver lake, I was busy preparing lots of herbal medicines and healing potions for the animals and fey folk who came to visit me for help each evening. When I spotted Papa and Frankie Fox as the first animals arriving. Poor little Frankie. He had scratched so much that most of his beautiful fur had fallen out. His head was hung low and he was so ashamed of how he looked that it just broke my heart. I brought them inside the willow tree right away as he looked so, so pitiful. I examined his tender red skin and applied fresh cloud moss to help stop the itching 
and gave his papa a small bottle of medicine and some very special herbal bubble bath for healing. Now don't you worry, Frankie, I said to the little sad fox. This medicine will make you better in no time, but you must stay at home until the itching is gone completely, okay? Then you can go out to play and back to Mr. Badger's classes. Over the next few days, after taking lots of my medicine and bubble bath, Frankie finally stopped itching. He was so happy, he couldn't wait to get back to Mr. Badger's classes and see all his friends. He hugged his papa and skipped out the door. He hadn't gone far when he heard the sound of human folk nearby. He smiled to himself and keeping out of sight, quietly edged closer thinking of how happy his friends would be if he could just get them a great feast when he returned. When the time was right, he sneaked out of his hiding place, struck a pose in front of the hawthorn tree and waited to be noticed. But to Frankie's great surprise, instead of being amazed at his beauty, the humans were disgusted. Ew! Look at that manky fox, one of them exclaimed. All his fur is missing. He's so ugly. Oh, stay away in case he has a disease. And they quickly moved away, not wanting a single photo. Frankie was horrified. No one had ever called him ugly before, ever. He walked over to the stream again and looked at himself in the water. He didn't even recognize himself. Almost all his fur was gone now, apart from a few little tufts here and there. I am ugly after all, he cried. He couldn't bear to let his friends see him like this, so he slinked back home again, feeling sad and dejected. Over the next few days, Nothing Papa Fox said could persuade Frankie to get out of bed. He felt hideous and didn't want anyone or anything in the world to see him. Your friends miss you, Frankie, said Papa. They love you. They'll understand that you look a little different at the moment. They won't mind. But still the little cub just wouldn't budge. Papa Fox knew he had to do something, so he decided to pay a visit to Mr. Badger and then to Grandma Woodmouse. The next morning, Papa woke Frankie up early. Frankie, there's someone here to see you. Come downstairs. Frankie didn't want to, but Papa managed to persuade him to just peep around the top of the stairs and see who it was. It was lovely Mr. Badger. Come on down, young man, he called. I've got something very important here for you. Grandma Woodmouse and all the mice at the sewing room have worked all night long to make this very special gift for you. They'll be most upset if you don't accept it. Frankie would never have dreamed of disobeying Mr. Badger. So head hung low, he slowly made his way down the stairs, feeling very ashamed of his appearance. Mr. Badger handed him the gift with a kind smile and he and Papa Fox watched as Frankie undid the string. Out fell an amazing jumpsuit in the colors of the fur Frankie had lost. A vibrant red back, a lovely white belly, and even bits of black on the legs. There was even a cover for his tail and a hood with ears for his head. Frankie put it on immediately and it fit perfectly. A huge grin formed on his young face and happy tears welled up in Papa Fox's eyes. Well, there we go, said Mr. Badger. Just in time to walk to class with me and uh, perhaps one or two of uh, your, your friends. Frankie was confused and looked out of the front door to see his whole class waiting for him. He felt a little overwhelmed and self-conscious suddenly. But before he could protest, lovely Flora Fox had run over and flung her arms around his neck. Oh, we've missed you, Frankie Fox, she exclaimed. 
Frankie blushed and looked at her with wide, concerned eyes. You, you really still want to be my friend, he asked quietly. Even without my beautiful fur? Even without our midnight feast because the humans don't like me anymore, so I can't get anything for you, he whispered sadly. Oh, Frankie, said Flora, hugging him tighter. We didn't love you because you had beautiful fur or because you got us great snacks. We love you because you're so friendly and kind to all of us. We don't care about the other things. We love you because you're you. Frankie was so happy. He really had the best friends ever. He trotted off to class in his wonderful new jumpsuit and all his friends around him and they had a wonderful day. Even though Frankie now knew his friends loved him no matter how he looked, he still wore his jumpsuit in the weeks that followed as it kept him very warm and snuggly. He still did his best to stay away from humans though. But one day, as he played among the fallen trees and branches in a quiet part of the parklands, he heard some approach him. In his scramble to get away, his wonderful jumpsuit caught on the brambles and tore, trapping him with nowhere to hide and exposing his fearless little body. He cowered down as they spotted him, terrified of their reaction to him and his unusual appearance. But instead he heard, Oh my, look at that poor sweet little fox. He's been poorly and he's caught on those brambles. Let's help him quickly. Those kind, big-hearted human folk rushed over to Frankie and with soft, comforting words and gentle strokes, untangled him from the brambles and removed the rest of his poorly torn jumpsuit. One of them examined his skin. Well, he was very poorly before, but he's better now. And look, you can see all his new fur growing back. Let's come back tomorrow with some special snacks to help his fur grow faster so he's all nice and cozy in time for winter. They said goodbye to Frankie and as quick as he could, he dashed over to the stream. Sure enough, his fur was beginning to reappear. Frankie danced with joy and raced off to show his papa and his friends. And sure enough, those wonderfully kind human folk came back the next day with lots of delicious treats for Frankie. They even brought extra just in case his friends had been sick too. Not long afterwards, his fur was back to its former glory and was more beautiful than ever. But he never forgot one important thing. If you have a kind heart, you'll find real friends who will always love you, no matter how you look. the end. Oh, isn't that lovely? And sweet little Frankie Fox now runs through the parklands looking as beautiful as ever again. And now all of his friends get snacks all of the time from those wonderful kind human folk. Isn't that just marvellous? Well, I hope you enjoyed the story. Please join us again for some more next time from Willow Tree Tales. Bye bye.